Having a secret language as well as a twin as your best friend are just some of the things that some people dream about because that would be pretty awesome. But for these girls known as the silent twins, June and Jennifer Gibbons, well, it became fatal. One of them had to die in order for the other one to live. What started out as a pact between the sisters, June and Jennifer thought it would be fun as children to speak to no one else except for each other. The twins were born on April 11th in 1963 in Barbados, but they were raised in the UK. Now growing up, they were made fun of a lot in school for their heavy Barbadian accent, as well as they experienced a lot of racism. The principal would even allow them to leave school five minutes early so they could avoid being bullied by the other students after school. Now what other people considered the twins secret language to be was just a sped up version of broken English, also known as Patois. Eventually June and Jennifer withdrew from society completely and they turned to literature as an outlet for their aggression that was building up inside of them. What's going on everybody? My name is Leroy Kenton. Welcome to this episode of FTD News in History. Now we're talking about the silent twins. Now I have to admit when researching this one I was a bit freaked out. It's still very unexplainable so you don't want to miss this one. Now before I continue with this story I want to know guys do you have any siblings? Let me know down there. In case you're wondering, I got three siblings, two sisters and a brother. Now, when these identical twins were 14 years old, their family members and doctors believe it would be a good idea to separate them completely and to send them to different boarding schools, hoping that they would become social again. But this attempt backfired and they became even more distant from society and began developing symptoms of schizophrenia. Eventually, the family as well as the doctors brought the twins back together and from there, June and Jennifer isolated themselves to their bedroom where they could be together and play. Now they say twins have a special bond. In this case, it was an extra special one. And also guys, let me know, do you have a twin? And if so, are you close to that twin? These girls, they spent several years doing this. They even put on very complex plays for each other with their dolls, reading, journaling, and writing poetry. They recorded some of their plays on tape in a soap opera style for their younger sister and even gave her a couple of journals for Christmas. That's when they became inspired to write novels and each of the twins wrote several novels. Both girls' stories focus on the strange and criminal behavior of their lead characters. In June's book, Pepsi Cola Addiction, the high school hero was seduced by a teacher and then he sent away to a reformatory where a homosexual guard makes a play for him. And now in Jennifer's book, The Pugilist, a doctor is so eager to save his child's life that he kills a family dog to obtain its heart for the transplant. And the dog's spirit lives on in the child and ultimately has his revenge against the father. Yeah, that sounds like really intense, like some Stephen King type stuff. Now the books were published by small independent companies, but they never became real hits in the world of literature. So that's when the twins decided to do something else to get noticed. They started committing crimes. Now this began just with petty thefts, but then it escalated to arson, you know, burning places down. Now in court, these twins were diagnosed as psychopaths and sent to the Broadmoor Hospital, which was a high security mental facility where some of the most evil rapists and murderers were sent to. Now there's some excerpts from June's diary and this is what she says. Nobody suffers the way I do. Not with a sister. With a husband, yes. With a wife, yes. With a child, yes. But this sister of mine, a dark shadow robbing me of sunlight, is my one and only torment. So yeah, what happened to that sibling love that they had? Well, she goes on to continue saying, We have become fatal enemies in each other's eyes. We feel the irritating deadly rays come out of our bodies, stinging each other's skin. I say to myself, can I get rid of my own shadow? Impossible or not possible. Without my shadow, would I gain life, be free, or left to die? Without my shadow, which I identify with a face of misery, deception, murder. And this got so bad, June and Jennifer actually tried to kill each other. Jennifer tried to strangle June with a radio cord and June tried to drown Jennifer in a river. But as fate would have it, they remained inseparable. The twins eventually began to believe that they would never be released from this powerful pact. 
unless one of them died. Now at the facility they were at, the doctors found June and Jennifer to be deeply disturbed and dangerous. They took turns eating, one eating in one day and the other starved themselves for that day. And even though they were split up and housed in different cells on opposite ends of the hospital, nurses often found them frozen in the same pose. Now this went on for 11 years. And that's when the doctors agreed to transfer the twins to another facility in Wales. And that was the Caswell Clinic, which was a lower security facility. But during their time at the Bradmore facility, they became friends with a woman by the name of Mayori Wallace, who went on to write their biography, and she became their only friend. Now one day, Jennifer told her this, I'm going to have to die. Mayori was kind of like laughing about it at the time, and she's like, what? No, you can't be serious. You're only 31 years old, what's wrong with you? And Mayori continued to ask her, why do you say that you're gonna have to die? And Jennifer responded saying, because we've decided. And then at that point, Mayori got real scared. And then they said they had made this pact and that Jennifer has to die because the day that they left Bradmore and were finally free from the secure hospital, one of them would have to give up their life to really enable the other one to be free. Now the transfer to the Coswell Clinic happened in 1993, but on the bus drive over while they're being transferred, according to June, Jennifer put her head on her shoulder and said that she didn't feel well and that she was gonna die. And then she fell asleep with her eyes open. Now once they got to the Coswell Clinic, Jennifer was completely unresponsive. Doctors then rushed her to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. And the cause of death was acute myocarditis or a sudden and lethal inflammation of the heart. So this story just continues to get weirder and weirder and weirder. Like she thought herself to death and then somehow her heart became inflamed and she died. And the crazy thing is the doctors found no evidence of poison at all. It was just a mystery to them. She just died just like that. Now, after Jennifer's death in 1993, June went on to live a so-called normal life. She had an interview with the New Yorker and she said that all she wanted to do was to get married and have children with a Rasta man like Bob Marley. In this great future which is life, you can't forget your past. So dry your tears, I say. June then wrote a poem for Jennifer's headstone, and it reads as follows. We once were two, we two made one, we no more two, through life be one, rest in peace. What, what was that? Anyways guys, that concludes this episode of FTD News in History. If you're just as confused as I was, let me know by hitting that like button. And if you enjoy these episodes, be sure to share them. And if you're new to this channel, subscribe because you want to be notified of all of these videos. You don't want to miss any of them. Until the next video guys, I'm Leroy Kenton. Boom, I'm out. All right, and that one was pretty crazy. Now, if you're in the mood for more mysterious occurrences, here's an episode on the six kids who vanished and were never found. Or maybe this one. Find out the shocking secrets about the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle is a section on this planet where planes and ships just disappear and no remains have ever been found. So go ahead, check out another video, and I'll see you soon.